we have made strides in the past, let's say, 20 years or so towards uh, this ideal of ending impunity. When the International Criminal Court was created, various regional courts and of all, also the strengthening of domestic criminal justice systems. So all of these uh, play together into a, a sort of a global effort to end impunity with a, with a focus traditionally has been on the so-called core crimes, crimes against humanity, war crimes and genocide. But I think that the COVID pandemic and economic crimes have sort of shifted the debate towards a more comprehensive view of what we mean by ending impunity. Because there are other systemic crimes that are also impacting on the lives of ordinary people. Widespread systemic corruption is impacting on people in a very real way. You can even compare it to crimes against humanity. Unfortunately, the International Criminal Court only has jurisdiction over war crimes, genocide, crimes against humanity and aggression. In order to, to fight the type of crimes that, that are also of systemic uh, impact, economic crimes, corruption, money laundering, we will have to look elsewhere. And that elsewhere for the time being is to strengthen domestic criminal justice systems. That goes hand in hand then with also strengthening mutual legal assistance, cooperation between states. And in that sense, I think the African Union has a key role to play to strengthen its mechanisms to cooperate between states in the fight against uh, economic crimes, systemic crimes, corruption, and so on. In that sense, I hope that the Malabo Protocol that is supposed to create this African criminal court or African criminal jurisdiction will be realized quite soon. And I think that's a very positive development and it should not be seen as if it is in competition with the International Criminal Court. I think it is, it goes hand in hand with a concerted effort to, to fill all the gaps at the international, regional and domestic level. The pandemic exposed a lot of governance issues uh, in the international system. If you compare the way that the United States under President Trump reacted to the World Health Organization's efforts to, to counter the pandemic and to cooperate and to bring the international community together, for domestic political reasons, the U.S. effectively counter-programmed the WHO and it exposed the fundamental flaw in the international system as we have it today, and that is it is still at the mercy of the big powers. Until we have a drastic reform of the international system, especially the Security Council, we will never get away from this idea that the big powers have a system for their purposes, and then there's a system for the rest of us. Africa, the developing world, should simply take ownership of those organizations that it can influence. For instance, the International Criminal Court. The African bloc of states in the International Criminal Court is the biggest of all. They, they have direct influence over that institution. The developing world has a very strong voice in the WHO. In that sense, if you take ownership of these international bodies and advance the progressive human rights-based agenda, that can counterbalance the cynical power politics of, of the big powers. What the long-term effect of it will be on issues like the rule of law and efforts to, to counter impunity, I think it's too early to tell. If we are going to see a prolonged period of the pandemic not being solved, then it will have an impact on what we understand to be a functioning criminal justice system. The future of international criminal justice and the rule of law and the fight against impunity, to my mind, lies at the domestic and regional levels.